What's it thinking, Colonel? It's no secret to anyone that the gaming industry has become a disaster lately. After the train wrecks that were Concord, Dustborn, and pretty much everything else crashing and burning, you'd think game companies would have learned by now. Instead of dropping the woke nonsense and focusing on making games that are, you know, fun and actually entertaining, they're doubling down and learning all the wrong lessons. Just look at what's happening with CD Projekt Red. CDPR a Polish company that gave us gems like The Witcher 3 and Cyberpunk seemed like one of the good ones. I thought they'd steer clear of all this DEI drivel and just stick to making great games. However, as I woke up this morning and opened Twitter, I was surprised to see the CEO of CDPR actually attacking a fellow YouTuber by the name of Andy Mion. Now, this guy's channel has about 280,000 subscribers. It's not as big as the ones with several million followers, but still not as small as mine. Apparently, he made a video calling out CDPR for falling victim to the DEI virus. Fair enough, right? Plenty of YouTubers say similar stuff all the time. What's interesting is that the CEO of CDPR, a massive company, actually bothered to respond to a guy with a relatively small channel. Makes you wonder if Endymion touched a sensitive nerve over there at CDPR. YouTube's full of fake news clickbait merchants making up wild stories for views. Yet, the CEO of CDPR didn't respond to any of those. Instead, he took out of his busy schedule to do some damage control to a video posted by a guy talking in a microphone in his own room. That's got to make you wonder if the guy wasn't onto something and the CEO's just scrambling to cover it up before they go down the same road as Ubisoft. So the CEO hops on Twitter and starts babbling about how CDPR's talent isn't leaving and how they're not doing any DEI-driven recruitment. Yeah, right. Two minutes on Google and you can find a long list of senior devs and managers who have left the company, including the Witcher 3 director himself. The reality is, a ton of veteran staff, people who worked on masterpieces like The Witcher 3, have jumped ship. These are folks with real talent, people who actually knew what they were doing. Either they got booted out, or they took one look at CDPR's DEI nonsense and noped out of there. Can't really blame them. And this seems to be in line with the DEI recruitment claim. While the CEO says there is no such thing as DEI-based hiring, their own website is contradicting him. They have entire sections dedicated to DEI, and just a few weeks ago, there was an entire backlash where they were announcing an internship program, but they were forbidding men to apply. They brag about being inclusive, but they immediately discriminate half of the population based on gender. And to add a cherry on top, they even hired a known activist who became famous in her claims where she said that they have to do everything in their power to push the LGBT agenda in video games. And looking at her eyes, you can see that this is one of those psychotic activists who will stop at nothing to push her agenda. Basically, CDPR's walking right into the same pit Ubisoft fell into. Here's a company where 80% of the fan base is male, and yet they're bending over backwards to alienate them, hiring activists instead of developers who care about games. Brilliant strategy, guys. My guess is that the CEO is desperately trying to do damage control because deep down, he knows the next Witcher game could be a total train wreck. Hell, it might end up like season three of the Witcher TV show, or worse, like that steaming pile of garbage called Blood Origin. Witcher 3 was released in 2015. This is a great game with awesome DLCs. 
The characters are badass, and the missions are very well developed with good story, acting, and character development. For me, the, the scenes of a marriage mission from the Heart of Stone DLC broke my heart. Despite the game following Geralt and Ciri, you get to know and respect several other characters. Olgierd von Everek is such a good example. Your instinct is to hate him from the beginning, but in the end, every time I have played this DLC, I could not let Master Mirror take his soul and ended up rescuing him every time. The game is a result of a talented, dedicated team who loved and respected the source material and ended up released on of the best RPG games of all times with over 50 million copies sold. Only three years after the game was released, the company has adopted the DEI policy in their company and several of the people who were involved in Witcher 3 have started leaving the company. Whether or not there is a connection here, I do not know, but as a company, you need senior and talented people to work on your projects. If one such talented people leaves your company might not be panic, but if you have 11 senior people leaving within just a few years, someone should panic at management level. Because loosing talented people and replacing them with activists is a sure fire made to make sure your next game will fail. The company has announced that the new Witcher 4 game will be made on Unreal Engine. But as I've said in a previous video, you can put lipstick on a pig, but at the end of the day, it's still a pig. It does not matter if the graphics look good, but the story sucks, the gameplay is buggy, and the game is pushing a DEI agenda. The Witcher game is about a mutant, killing monsters, fulfilling contracts and getting laid. But I've got a sneaking suspicion that instead of that, we're going to get a black lesbian woman in a wheelchair who's too busy lecturing everyone about pronouns to actually kill anything. After all, those poor monsters are just misunderstood, right? Joking aside, it's clear that the next Witcher game will be full of identity politics. While I am glad that we will still have Geralt, according to the voice actor, the game will most likely be similar to the TV series, where Geralt will hardly appear in it, and the focus will only be on gay romances and race and gender-swapped characters. And this seems to be exactly the case, according to some information leaked, and I quote, We know that Geralt will be part of the game, we just don't know how much. The game won't focus on Geralt, so it's not about him this time. We don't know who it's about, I'm excited to find out, end quote. Basically, you will have a Witcher game without a Witcher. Because Ciri is a child of the Elder Blood, she isn't really a Witcher. And while playing her in a few missions in Witcher 3 was fun, I especially liked her teleporting ability, the game is called The Witcher. And Geralt, with his looks and voice, are iconic to the franchise. They refused to put him into a leading role in the TV series, and we all saw how that performed. This seems to be the only logical explanation on why the CEO of such a big company is attacking a YouTuber and trying to do damage control, or why the shill media has instantly rushed to the defense of CDPR, also attacking the gamers for rejecting the woke agenda and victimizing the company. If the shill media is defending your company's DEI policies, you are on the wrong side of history, dear CDPR. You have a golden goose on your hands. Witcher 4 has a chance to become even more successful than Witcher 3 if you will not go the DEI way. We saw what happened with the release of Cyberpunk 2077. When you listened to criticism and actually fixed the game, people came around. But if you're more focused on identity checklists than delivering a good game, you're screwed. Hiring diverse people just to tick boxes instead of hiring people who can actually make a good game is a recipe for disaster. Personally, I've sunk over 800 hours into The Witcher 3 and I still replay it every year. I would buy a decent Witcher 4 in a heartbeat and recommend it to everyone I know. But if CDPR joins up with companies like Sweet Baby or starts telling gamers, if you don't like it, don't buy it, 
then the Witcher franchise is officially dead. Just look at games like Black Myth Wukong or Space Marine 2. Both are proof that you can make games people love without pandering to the imaginary modern audience with woke garbage. Here's some advice, CDPR. Watch Ubisoft's downfall and take notes. Fire the activists, stop pushing a political agenda and just make a damn good game. Personally, I would hate to make a video one year from now where I have to review a Witcher 4 game where they use pronouns and talk about diversity in Novigrad. The TV series have race and gender swapped and destroyed almost all characters. And trust me, no one's going to give a crap what happens in Season 4. So don't make the same mistakes, stop fighting your audience, and just focus on making a game that people actually want to play. It's honestly depressing to see how the woke virus has infected a once great Polish company that was all about making quality games. I mean, CDPR's ESG video on YouTube has 300 likes to 11,000 dislikes. That's a pretty clear message from your audience. We don't want DEI infested games. We want fun games which can make us relax without any agenda being shoved down our throats. I'm looking forward to that first trailer and gameplay videos for Witcher 4. If it's faithful to the source material and respects the characters and lore, fantastic. But if it's built for the modern gaming audience and you start calling us toxic for not liking it, well, let's just say we'll roast you constantly and we will give you the same treatment Geralt gave to the Bloody Baron. We need to talk.